what you guys got another video here for you on how to dual boot windows 10 and phoenix os quite a few people wanted to see the dual boot one so here you go it's pretty straightforward and easy to do the first thing to do which is the most important thing is make sure you back up all of your data just in case something goes wrong you don't want to lose all your data so make sure you make a full backup of all your data on your computer before you continue next up you want to change your bios to legacy boot in the BIOS, uh, this is very simple and easy to do. Just go into your BIOS and make sure you're changing to legacy instead of UEFI. Also, disable secure boot in your BIOS. Sometimes you can get away with just disabling secure boot and leaving UEFI on, but I've just gone for BIOS uh, setting and also for disabling uh, secure boot. Next, you're gonna need to download the executable installer for Windows. You can either download it from the Google download button or the Mega download button the problem i had was i couldn't get a download for these because they were always uh, used up and it says there's no more uh, resources left basically or something along those lines sorry you cannot view or download this at this time it's probably because it's exhausted its amount of downloads that it can do for that day it's probably a lot of people doing it i did find an alternative link here which I downloaded. Now I'm not going to leave that link in the video description. So if you want to do that, just be very, very careful where you download the Phoenix OS installer from. It should be 600 odd megabytes in size. And when it comes down, it should be a legitimate Phoenix OS installer from them. Okay. Now, if you download it from another source, you could run into problems. So be careful when downloading it. It should look something like this. Just to check, you can hover over it and look at the description of that file. You can right click and go to properties and take a closer look at the details of this file. You can see it is Phoenix OS installer, type application, gives you the file version, product name, uh, product version, and also copyright and the size of the file, date modified and language and stuff like that. So I know this file is legit because I checked it before I installed it. So I'm happy to go ahead and install that. So I'm just going to double click on here and go ahead and click yes here. You should see verify publisher and this will be Chinese writing. That's fine. They are the people that created this Phoenix OS. Once you've done this, you will get this Phoenix OS installer pop up here. Now you can click on the install button. Now what this is going to do is start to uh, get it all prepared and install it as a dual boot on your system okay so if you haven't backed up your data at this stage make sure you do so before you continue just in case if you're all ready to go then just click on the hard disk and this will be your c drive or other drive and then you can choose the data size this will be the size of the data that it needs to use and i'm going to use 16 gigabytes here again you can just choose whatever storage size you want click install and this does take a fair bit of time so be patient just let it do its thing and i'll speed this process up but it does take quite a while so just let it go ahead and do that make sure you've got enough storage space on your drive before you continue because you haven't then you're going to run into problems and then you should uh, be okay once this is done i'll show you some other things to check here so you can see here congratulations uh, it has been installed and we can now check our c root directory which should have a Phoenix OS folder in there. So let's go ahead and take a look there. Inside here, you can see we have Phoenix OS and there it is. And you can see 17.9 gigabytes in size. Go inside here, this is where all your files will be. You can uninstall it and it's. Uh, I'll show you that process at the end. Uh, but again, once you've done this, you should have the operating system in there. Once you've done that, you can then reboot the system. But I just want to show you something here. Click on CMD in the uh, search box here and open up command prompt as administrator here and type in here BCD edit. And what you should be looking for here is an entry called real mode uh, boot sector. So come down, should be down at the bottom here. There we go. If you don't see this, then it hasn't installed properly. That means you've got either a setting in the BIOS that's not been done like I told you to do. And if you don't see that, it's not going to work. You're just going to get a black screen or you're not going to get it to install. OK, so make sure that is there and you should be good to go on the next step. So let's go restart here and let the system reboot. It will automatically detect that you've just made changes and it will automatically detect Android has been installed on the system and it will start to initialize 
This does take a bit of time, be patient. It can take a few minutes to uh, synchronize and initialize the uh, drive on there. So just be patient and let it do its thing. I'll speed this process up. It did take two or three minutes. You should now see the welcome to Phoenix OS. You can change the language to English United States and then click on next. Accept their user license agreement here and also you will see connected to your network or Wi-Fi, whatever it is you're trying to connect to. Click next here and we'll move on to the next stage. Create an account. I'm going to leave this as owner and click finish and you should be at the desktop of your operating system. You can now start to use your operating system, whatever you want to do here, and you should be able to pretty much enjoy playing games on Android from here and a bunch of other stuff. You can set up your uh, Google account on here, your uh, Google App Store, go into there, log in, and you should be able to download applications like uh, games and stuff like that. So let's restart our system and take a look. So you can see here, this is going to reboot and straight into Windows 10, you will get that menu system now. So once we get to the splash screen in the menu, you can either choose Android or Windows 10. It's entirely up to you. So let that just come up here. So just be patient. And there we go. It's starting to come up here. There we go. We have Windows 10 and Phoenix OS. You can choose which one you want to do and you can change the time here if you want to do it. I'm just going to leave it as default and choose Windows 10 here. Let's go back into Windows 10 and then I'll show you exactly how you can remove this from the system if you don't want it on the system anymore. So once you're back at your desktop, if you want to remove uh, the dual boot from the system, then you can just use the installer. So don't go and delete the installer, otherwise you're going to end up having to go and find it again. So we're just going to click on the installer here, click yes, and this will open this up and you now see the option to uninstall. Click on uninstall, click yes, and this will uninstall the operating system from there. If you want to just check here, we can just do a quick check. So let me go ahead and check here. In the C root directory, you can see the folder has been removed. All of the files have gone. And if you want to check your uh, boot order here, you can check CMD in the search box, run this as administrator. And again, type in here BCD edit, and you will see that entry has now been removed. And that's it. You've just uh, removed Phoenix OS from the system and you've also created a dual boot with Phoenix OS on the system. That's how easy it is. Also guys, if you want to see me install this on a virtual machine like VMware or VirtualBox, there's a few things that you have to do to get it to work. So if you want to see that video, let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to make those videos for you. Other than that, if you are messing around with uh, dual boots, then make sure you back up all your data first. With that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall see you again tomorrow for another video. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.